this is Ginger from Our Thought Place and Praise. Today I'm going to make a review of the pens and markers you can use for Bible journaling. Right off the bat, I'll say none of the products I'm featuring here were sponsored. I bought all of these pens and markers on my own because I was curious about them. I'm making this comparison because people have asked me several times about stuff I use in my art, more specifically pens for Bible journaling. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Muji pens from Japan. These are new in the market but are becoming popular because they're really good quality pens. And I'll compare them with the Sakura Pigma Microns, which a lot of people already know about because they've been here for a far longer time. I'll talk about the jelly rolls that come in big and small sets in different colors. Some are metallic, some have sparkling glitters, and they call them Stardust. The biggest box comes with a template on the back. You can create your own swabs by coloring in the circles so you'll get an idea what the inks look like and what levels of saturation you get. In this video, I'll also show you how to use white ink pens, which many prefer when writing on dark paper. So I'm going to test this out later and I'll tell you my favorite brand. Um, I'll also make a quick review of pa Faber Castell Pit Artist Pens. These are on the high side of the budget spectrum. If you're willing to make an investment, I must say these are worth the money. They're amazing in multiple levels, from the brush nibs to the ink flow to the color saturation, and even down to the storage box. Um, lastly, I'll talk about Stedler's Tri Plus Fine Liner, which is my go-to pen for many of my art journals. I don't know, I find these colors really yummy, like they're calling out to me, pick me, pick me, so I pick them. <laughs> um, they're great for watercolor applications and for highlights on acrylic paint. Okay, so I'll start with the Muji pens because not so many people know about it. These pens come in assorted colors and different thicknesses. What I got is a 0 0.5, I know there is also a 0.3. Here I brought out my Bible because many people have been asking me what pens are best for writing on Bible paper without ghosting or bleeding through the back. As you know, Bible paper is as thin as onion skin, so it's quite difficult to find a pen that will respect your Bible. Many of you are Bible note takers or Bible journalers. Often when you're on the go, like when you uh, bring your Bible to church, you, you like to take down notes as your pastor speaks. You don't really bring stuff like gesso or matte medium to protect your Bible pages, right? Um, well, can you imagine yourself bringing all your art supplies and spreading them out on the pews? Of, of course, you can't do that. So sometimes you need a dependable pen you can use to quickly scribble without fear of damaging your Bible pages. And that's where the Muji comes in. These pens are really dependable. I myself was surprised at how well these pens perform when they look so ordinary and unassuming like this. The company packages their products in such a generic way you wouldn't think they're amazing. So see here, there's nothing, absolutely nothing, no bleeds. Although I created ridges on the paper because I was pushing down too hard, I can feel the bumps here. But you can't see any ink smudges at all that may interfere with reading the verses on this page. So that's pretty good. There's a little bit of ghosting but nothing annoying. So if you're taking down notes and Bible paper, this Muji pen is fine. Now we'll talk about the Pigma Micron pens. These are archival quality. I have here a set with all blacks. They also have assorted colors, and if you look here, microns come in different thicknesses, and there's a number here beside the brand label that indicates its size, like 0, 1, 0, 3, and 0, 0, 5. Actually, those numbers correspond to the thickness of the tip. So, so how fine do you want your lines to be? The 0, 0, 005 like this one is going to write the 0.2 millimeter fine line, which is perfect for detailed work. Personally, I like using the 01 for Bible journaling because it really doesn't ghost on the back. I'm going to show you the different nib sizes with the black pens later. We can test them out. As you can see, I'm writing on this same Bible page. So we can compare the Micron with the Muji and see if it will ghost. I'm also bearing down heavily on the paper and I'm adding shades on the letters just as I did with the Muji. 
I want to know if it will be alright to color sections of my Bible with this pen without damaging the flip side. Now the piece word on the left was written with a 0.5 Muji. Actually the Sakura Micron on the right looks thicker but it's only a 0.35 millimeter tip. It's supposed to be finer but for some reason it writes thickly compared to the Muji and I'm guessing it might be because the Micron has a felt nib, maybe. Uh, it may be distorted to a certain degree whereas the Muji has a metal point. I press down heavily, equally heavily on the Bible and on the back, let's see, you can see the ridges I created. The flip side is bumpy but there are no ink bleeds. Keep in mind I didn't treat this Bible with any matte medium or gesso. I wrote directly as you saw me do so and the results are decent. Now moving on, I'll try out these jelly roll pens on ordinary paper first. I'm not too confident these will work on my Bible. I have a feeling it will bleed. Each type is different from the other, so we'll try the metallic pens first. I just picked randomly from the box. Let's see how that writes. I'll try this blue, bronze, and this sort of copper-like color. Oh, I forgot to mention the colors of the pen caps are more or less uh, matching with the ink color but there are a few markers with shades that are a bit off. The ink flow is not very consistent. When I did the scroll some of the ink didn't come out even though I was pressing down evenly on the paper. Mm, not very nice. Uh, you notice the ink formed a blob when I wrote patience. The ink just kind of dripped on me. One thing cute though is that you can see the metallic sheen on this ink. It may be hard to view from the video but the writing is shiny when the light hits it at an angle. Let's check out the back. It goes quite a bit considering this is already thick copy paper. On Bible paper I'm not sure how that's going to pan out because of the inconsistent flow and that sudden gush of ink. I'm kind of worried about using this in my Bible. It might damage my paper. Let's try the classic colors. For these pens, the point is supposed to be either 0.3 or 0.4 millimeters. That means they create fine lines. is very good. It's more decent than the first one. It's smoother to write with but it doesn't seem like it's a 0.3 or a 0.4. This brown pen feels like it's a little thicker than what it says on the label. Not like the blue which really produces a fine line. Let's try the dark blue. It's I'll just doodle here. I'm trying to feel the pen. This one feels good. It's also smooth and the ink flows without uh, weird erratic patches. No unwanted surprises here, none so far. I didn't have problems with ink suddenly blotting out and the lines are just as the label says, 0.3. The back looks clean but what happens if we use this on Bible paper? We'll check that out in a while but for now let's try the moonlight. The moonlight is a bit luminous. They come in both points 3 and 0.5 millimeter thickness and it's supposed to have that fluorescent sheen. See the colors, they're very rich. Then the stardust has glitters in it. For you guys who like sparkly ink, this is your pen. I don't know what I'm doing but I'm just playing around with some doodles. It's supposed to be metallic, a bit metallic. I can see it here from where I am but I'm not sure if this video can capture it. The, the stardust and metallic pens are almost the same. They both have a certain glow. If you tilt the paper, you can see it. Okay, that works. Now, the last jelly rolls would be the shadow. They call it shadow because it has a dual tone. So there are two colors mixed together, like this one here is supposed to have a gold hue mixed with a pink. I see more of the pink actually, but for some reason, Sakura says there's some gold hidden somewhere. The other pen is also pink but with a bit of silver mixed with it. Let's check it out. It looks like an undersaturated pink, not blatantly bright. These pens make a 0.7 millimeter line, thicker than the classic. I'm tilting this paper a bit to show you the gold and silver 
tones of the ink, you notice it. You know, it's shiny. So these jelly rolls perform as the labels say they should, um, well, more or less. They're good for note-taking on regular thick-rate notebooks and they're good for art journals and adult coloring books, but for Bibles, I don't think these pens will work. I pull my Bibles, I can doodle one letter here. I pick the classic blue to make everything blue on this page. This pen I'm using here is a 0.3 millimeters and I'm shading some parts to check if that will show off on the flip side and we'll see what happens on the opposite page. Okay, let's take a look. Um, it shows up. The markings are too visible on this page and it's not a good pen to use in your Bible. It's good for other purposes, maybe uh, for regular paper, but it won't work on thin onion, onion skin Bible paper. It's not bleeding, but it's ghosting a lot. And if you're writing on the opposite side of your page, then that's not going to look pretty. It's going to be difficult to read your notes. Okay, so here's your comparison, the Muji, the Pigma, and the Jelly Roll here, this last one. For those of you who would like to write on black or dark paper, you may want to try this Uniball Signo white ink pen. I found this in Amazon and it made, it's made in Japan. It comes in two points. The broad point gel pen creates one millimeter lines and the finer one draws 0.4 millimeter lines. I personally prefer the broad point ones because the ink flows better and the white appears more opaque. Uh, this second pen I'm demonstrating here has a finer point. However, the drawing looks more gray than white against this black background. I think you'd have to go over your drawing twice, maybe three times to um, achieve the same effect as the broad point uniball. Uh, Sakura Je Jelly Roll Classic also has the white pens at medium point. I tried them before but I didn't like how translucent the lines turned out. Writing wasn't smooth and I had to struggle with making the ink flow because the pens clogged too often. So I was searching for alternatives when I ended up with Uniball. Uh, it's not perfect either. There are times the signal skips or stops flowing and I had to kind of shake the pen a bit to keep the ink flowing. But overall, I find that the Uniball signal produces better results. So. For note takers among you who like to write using black pens only instead of colored pens, I'm showing here some microns with different nib sizes. The smaller, thinner, finer pen is a 005 and from there it goes up to 01 up to 08. Now I wrote on my Bible to test out these black pens. The one with the 005 label writes with a 0.2 millimeter tip is very fine. And the 01 pen has a 0.25, the 02 makes 0.3 millimeter lines, the 03 is a 0.35, the 05 is a 0.45 and the thickest one, the 08, um, draws a 0.5 millimeter line. Now pay attention to the writing and uh, let me zoom that in so you can have a closer look. Um, notice the differences here. The 08 is really fat and I don't think you'd like to use that on your Bible paper. If you're taking down notes, um, let's check out the opposite page and see what happened there. Let's see, um, there's still a bit of ghosting with the Sakura Pigma Micron, but the ink is not bleeding through in a nasty way. If you're sort of finicky and strict about having clean white paper on every page of your Bible, well, there's still a bit of visibility here, but they're not so bad. They're perfectly acceptable. Your best bet would be the 005. The thinner the pen, the better. Of course, none of these matter when you're writing on sketchbooks or paper with higher grams per square meter or GSM, which is the universal unit for measuring paper thickness and weight. But Bibles tend to be more picky with the pen, so go with a smaller size, 005. That's even better. 
Uh, heading now to Settler, I'd uh, I'm sampling here the Triplus Fineliner, which is a metal clad tip and draws extra fine 0.3 millimeter lines. Stedler has been in the pen business for as long as I can remember. They know what artists need and so they keep coming up with great ideas. One thing quickly noticeable about these pens is the triangular barrel that sits ergonomically in your hands. It's so comfortable to grip these pens. I've used them many times in my art journals and you can watch some of those videos in my channel. The ink is water-based, so if you smudge the line marks with water, you can actually create a nice, very nice watercolor effect with these pens. The Triplus is packaged in large or small sets. You can buy these in packs of 48 or 42 bright colors, yeah. They also come in boxes of 36 pens or 32s. Yeah, I think. I think there's even a smaller one, like the plastic cartridge of six pens you can find in Amazon, which is perfect for people on the go. They're pretty cool on mixed media paper, but how do they perform on thin Bible paper? We'll find out from the flip side of my doodles here. Let's see. Well, we've got plenty of nasties here. The parts of my hand lettering where I shaded, you can see it on this flip side. The ink is not only ghosting, it bled too, so yep. Uh, Stedler won't be your choice for Bible journaling. You can use it only after you prep your page with gesso or maybe matte medium or any varnish if you're an, in, um, if you're an intentional Bible journaler. But if you're just randomly note-taking and you're going to grab the first pen that you see, you know that with Triplus, this is what you'll get. Heading now to the last pen I'll review here. Here's the Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens. There's nothing negative I can say about these pens. These markers have brush nibs, so they're awesome to use. It's like you're painting with a paintbrush. It's very smooth and the India ink is well saturated and blends so well to create nice gradients. Um, these pit pens come in assorted sizes like six pens in a box. There are boxes with 24, 60, and even 90 pens which are packed in a professional looking wooden case. Mine is 48 and it already has a good selection of colors to work with. These markers are a bit pricey but you know you're buying quality so you're definitely not going be to be disappointed with Faber-Castell. They know artists and create awesome supplies. Having said that, I wonder how great these pens will perform outside the normal artist grade paper. As I said, Bibles are very picky so you can't just go in and scribble with the first writing tool you grab. So let's check out what happens on the opposite page of all my doodles. I made sure I pressed down on this paper and as you have noticed, I ran through my lines a couple of times to thicken and highlight my design. So let's see, wow, even with all my shading, none of the markers see through the paper. See the back here is very clean except for a little ghosting. I can still read the Bible verses. The Stedler Triplus left more marks than the Pit Artist pens. So there you go, you have these pens as another alternative to add to your stash of Bible journaling supplies. You can color and shade with it and not worry about messing up the back. It's good to know it works on thin paper too. So let me recap the results of our tests here. Faber Castle Pit Artist pens are okay. Triplus are not. Muji pens are perfect too. It's the one we use to write of the piece word. The Pigma Microns are awesome as well, whether you use a colored variety or just the black ones. But make sure you choose the Microns with the smallest, finest nib to play on the safe side. So the Uniball Signo is a nice touch for highlighting on black paper. I just demoed that on cardstock but not on Bible pages. Jelly rolls are risky because their ink flow is inconsistent. Sometimes they drip without warning and may cause bleeds on your Bible. But if you're prepping your Bible with gesso, go ahead and use the jelly rolls. 
Okay, so that's it. Have fun with your Bible journaling. If you're serious about getting into the Word and studying scriptures while marking up and decorating your Bible, let me recommend to you the YouTube channel of Cat Woods. Check out the link in the description box. Hello friends, uh, this is Ginger from Art That... Uh... <laughs> Art That What? I forgot my name! Art That Praise! Oh my gooey cheesy wow! 